Deke, you ready to go? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, Deke, let's go right ahead. Okay, good evening, everybody. Good evening. I'm going to be coming from uh, Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 and 5. Let's stand for the reading of God's holy and inert word. I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Thus ends the reading of God's holy and an earned word. Let's look to the Lord, Father God, we just come today first and foremost, Lord, just thanking you. Thanking you for your grace and for your mercy, Lord, for for giving us another day, Lord, that you do not have to do. For giving us all the blessings, Lord, that we don't deserve. And we thank you, Lord. We know, Father God, that we are nothing without you and that all good things come from you. We ask, Father God, that you would open the minds and hearts of each and every one of us tonight so that we would be able to receive your word, Lord, and that we would understand your character, understand your will, Lord. That's why we study, Lord, so that we can be closer to you. So, Father God, we just give you all the honor and we give you all the glory. And all these things we ask in your mighty, precious name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. All right. Um, the lesson tonight is going to be on joy. Okay? Let's get started. The New Testament starts with joy through the announcement of a Savior born in the city of David. See Luke 2, 10, 11. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. The first mention of the Messiah was in Genesis 3.15. Imagine the joy of believers when Jesus was born. Joy is an inward display given to us by the Holy Spirit. Happiness is an outward expression, which comes and goes. But joy is always present in the believer. The joy of the Lord surpasses all good feelings. When we lose a loved one, we grieve. But in 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says, we do not grieve as others who have no hope. Despite his difficult circumstances as a prisoner in Rome, Paul was rejoicing. The secret of his joy was the single mind. He lived for Christ and the gospel. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Philippians 1.21. But what really is the single mind? I'm glad you asked. It is the attitude that says it makes no difference what happens to me so long as Christ is glorified and the gospel shared with others. Paul rejoiced despite his circumstances, strengthening the fellowship of gospel, Philippians 1, 1 11. promoting the furtherance of the gospel, Philippians 1, 12 to 26 and guarding the faith of the gospel, Philippians 1, 27, 30. Let's look at the biblical definition of joy, which says that joy is a feeling of good pleasure and happiness that is dependent on who Jesus is rather than on who we are or what is happening around us. Joy comes from the Holy Spirit abiding in God's presence and from hope God's for, and, and from hope in his word. Despite the many hardships experiences, all we must do is just think about the goodness of the Lord, how he makes a way out of nowhere, and how we continually receive his blessings and joy shows up. Let me share with you my personal testimony as it relates to the subject at hand. My father died March of 2006. He was my best friend. No one could ask for a better father or friend. We saw or spoke to each other most every day. Like clockwise, 
cut clockwork, he was at my house every Sunday morning, 7 a.m. sharp. We would have coffee and talk for hours. Keep in mind, my wife was up getting the kids ready for church. Don't get me wrong. I was raised in the church, but as I became of age, I made the decision to leave the church. I became a New Year's Eve Christian, an Easter Christian. When my father died, I lost all happiness and joy was nowhere to be found. I could not get myself together. I grieved like those who had no hope. My wife and my mother continually tried to minister to me, but I was so low that I could not receive it. To me, all was lost, but my wife never gave up continually encouraging me to seek the Lord. Finally, after much insistence from my wife and children, I decided to go to church. To my surprise, the word that was preached touched my soul. And for the first time in a long time, I felt some relief. I continued to come to church, and before long, I found myself answering the altar call, and the rest is history. Now, fast forward to September 2011. My mother died, and I was in the church and had been ordained as a deacon. My mother was a member of Nazarene Baptist Church for over 75 years. Just as I had fellowship with my father every Sunday, I had Bible study every Saturday with my mother. Even though I lost my mother, I did not lose my joy. I knew I would see her again. As for my father, he also was raised in the church and his mother was a God-fearing woman who taught all her children the word of God. So I know my father believed that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and was raised from the dead on the third day by God the Father. So I'm sure I will see him again. I shared my testimony with you in hopes that you will see what I found, that only through God can you receive joy. You know, every time pastor does the altar call, and Deacon Collins in the church. He comes right behind pastor when pastor asks them to come. And he says, you will never be the same. And that stuck with me. So isn't it remarkable that Paul was thinking of others and not of himself? As he awaited his trial in Rome, Paul's mind went back to the believer and Philippi. Philipp and every recollection he had brought him joy. Read Acts 16, you may discover that some things happened to Paul at Philippi, the memory of which could produce sorrow. He was illegally arrested and beaten, was placed in the stocks and was humiliated before the people. But even those memories brought joy to Paul because it was through this suffering that the jailer found Christ. Paul recalled Lydia and her household, the poor slave girl who had been demon possessed and the other dear Christians at Philippi and each recollection was a source of joy. Paul found joy in his memories of the friends of Philippi and in his growing love for them. He also found joy in remembering them before the throne of grace in prayer. The high priest in the Old Testament wore a special garment, the ephod, over his heart. On it were 12 stones with the names of the 12 tribes of Israel engraved on them, a jewel for each tribe, Exodus 28, 15, 29. He carried the people over his heart in love, and so did Paul. Perhaps the deepest Christian fellowship and joy we can experience in this life is at the throne of grace, praying with 
and for one another. Last but not least, it is worth asking, am I the kind of Christian who brings joy to my pastor's mind when he thinks of me? Thank you. I appreciate you. I hope I touch somebody this evening. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Father, thank you for joy. Thank you, Lord, for all the sources of joy that you give to us, Lord, the joy of our salvation. Thank you, Lord, that when it all comes down, whatever else is happening in life, whatever else is going on in the world, when we've got you, Lord, we know we're going to be all right. We know yeah. that you got things in control, Father. I pray for all those on the line tonight that they will know they've got this joy. Sometimes, Lord, even when we have accepted you as Christ and Savior of our lives, uh, Lord, sometimes we, 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 we start to prioritize other things and forget just how great our salvation is. Uh, Lord, I pray tonight, uh, before we go through problems, before we walk to the valley and shadow of death, that already we will realize the joy of our salvation. Bless everyone on the line tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless everybody. Have a great night. All right. uh, remember, tomorrow morning, Dr. J is back at the prayer line at 8 a.m. So join us uh, for an inspiring word from Dr. J tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Stout. Stout. Thank you, Dr. Stout. Good night, everyone. Have a Good blessed night. evening. Right. Good night. Have Thank a blessed you. evening on purpose. Okay. Good night. Good night.